on your media library and the strategy for the future of it. All the new updates for the migration API and a lot of other features. This is what we are going to be able to see today in this new Prismic Chronicles episode. I'm Renaud and I'm the head of product at Prismic. And today with the team, Guy, Alena and Francois, we are going to show you all what we've been working on this month and the future improvement that you can expect this quarter. I'm going to leave now the mic to Guy that is going to show you all the progress that we've done in the page builder and give you a glimpse of the future strategy for it. Hello everyone, uh, it's Guy here from the page builder team. Just wanted to provide you with an update on some of the stuff um, that we've been working on over the last quarter and a quick teaser for some of the features that will be coming very soon in Q1 and what you can expect uh, from the page builder team. So just to quickly recap for those of you who may not be familiar with the page builder, essentially it's our new editing tool. We'll replace eventually the current editing experience that you have in Prismic. And basically the new page builder is a tool that we think is gonna help make you way more productive and achieve your goals in terms of um, creating on-brand performant web pages. And so essentially like we've uh, built around the concept of slices. So in terms of what developers are, are building on their side. So um, building these reusable components or slices. And then essentially for marketing teams and for editors with this um, layout that we have, which is inspired heavily by like a slide deck, basically means you can use those uh, slices um, to build and assemble your page. So in a similar way that you would build a presentation or something like that, um, basically, give you the flexibility to create and compose your page um, with all of those slices. So um, today the update is basically around um, some features that will hopefully enable more people to use the, the new page builder. And so uh, what we've been working on is enabling user roles. So basically um, within Prismic, we have a concept of user roles, uh, means that you can restrict actions to some people. So maybe you don't want some people to be able to publish content or to schedule content, or things like that. Um, so basically it works uh, very simple in that you can assign um, user roles in the settings section of your page. Um, nothing's changed there, but now basically the page builder recognizes those roles. So as you can see here, um, I have the role of a writer. And if I try and publish a page, I'll see that that's disabled. And essentially it says that only people who have the role of publisher or above or administrator can publish documents um, within Prismic. Also, I'm prevented from archiving the page. And if the page was published, I'd be prevented from unpublishing the page. Also, what we've done is basically um, what we allow you to do is we allow you to create a release. Um, so for example, maybe you want to um, schedule something as a writer, you can schedule that and you can have someone review it and publish it for you. So you can create a release, but you just can't schedule it for publication. And you can also add to an existing release if it's yet to be published. So again, just making sure that people have this writer role, um, don't have kind of a workaround to publish things and things like that. But um, we do provide them with the ability to maybe get their work reviewed by someone else as part of a um, unscheduled release or something like that. So this is the first iteration of releases and one of the things that we will be working on um, coming into Q2 and things like that is um, more granularity with user roles. So essentially having user roles exist um, per groups of custom types and, and that's a feature called Team Spaces, um, which you can see more on the on the progress page and we'll have more updates um, as, we, as we start developing and working on that feature. The other thing that I wanted to update you on today is the new media library. So one of the things we've heard a lot from our users with the old media library and the legacy editor at Prismic is it's very difficult to uh, find what you're looking for and to kind of organize your media and things like that, um, leading to people uploading duplicates of media and, and having really kind of big convoluted media library. So this has been a top priority for us is to fix and improve that experience. And essentially, if you have the, the page builder, um, you'll start to see some updates and some progress there in terms of this new media library. So just the first thing is we're introducing um, the new UI, which you can see on um, the screen here, and it will have feature parity with the existing media library. So things like the search, um, metadata, stuff like that. So I think I have a Bob the Builder one, so I can search, I can find that in my media library. 
um, you'll see if I click on here, I can see the, the metadata and, and stuff like that. Um, we will have all the existing stuff, so the private notes, um, copyright and stuff as well. And then um, we will start to iterate and add new features to the media library uh, through Q1. So we will be adding a brand new um, search, which will work much better than the existing one and make it way easier to find what you're looking for. We're also going to add some filters and tags. So you'll be able to apply tags to images. You'll be able to apply advanced filters. So again, better categorization and better ability to find what you're looking for. And then we'll also be adding the ability to bulk delete. Um, so yeah, you'll be able to get rid of uh, all the duplicate images that you've had to update to add in the past um, because you can find what you're looking for. Cool, thanks very much everyone. Uh, if you would like to have this awesome new tool, um, you can request access via the link below. Also, please don't uh, forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also for our email updates so you can learn more about all the new features that we have coming, uh, potentially get early access. Um, and yeah, try them out and give us your feedback. So thanks very much, everyone. Um, we'll catch you soon. Hi there, my name is Elena, and I'm excited to show you some new enhancements that we've made to the Migration API. The Migration API, as a reminder, is an API with which you can create and also update documents to Prismic. So when you um, update uh, or create documents now, you have a dedicated space in your uh, Prismic repository that's called Migration Release and all of the documents that you create and update are going to go right into this migration release and you can preview and publish up to 1000 documents at one time so that makes it a lot easier and a lot faster for you to get your your documents um, live and published with Prismic. in addition although we still are in closed beta um, we have enabled uh, a try migration api option in this menu item and that's going to allow you to um, go ahead and make your first call with the migration api we've prepared we've provided you with a with a demo key right in this uh, little code snippet here for authentication that you can use to start making uh, your first calls explore the api see how it works for you see it in action and then you can go ahead and um, check out the documentation for a bit more in-depth um, introduction to, to uh, what it can do. Or you can also, if you have a big migration and you would prefer to have a dedicated key versus using the demo key, you can join the waitlist right from, from this screen and uh, we'll get you a dedicated key to perform your uh, migration. We have also added one more option, and that is under settings in API and security. So previously, you could only authenticate via a user session token. And this user session token was a little bit inconvenient for some of you because uh, it didn't work well with uh, GitHub SSO or any other SSO that you might be authenticating to Prismic with. And it also uh, expires every 48 hours. So you have to refresh it. We've um, made that better for you by introducing a permanent token that you can now use for the migration API. And you can create it right here under this right APIs tab just by adding a name and um, creating a token. Glad to, glad to share that with you and um, looking forward to hearing your feedback. Thanks. Hey, Francois here. Today, we'd like to share with you an helpful update that we have made to our local management feature. Previously, changing the master local in your repository could be a laborious task, especially if you have a significant number of documents. We have simplified this process. Just go in your settings, click on translations and locales, and you will find an option to select a new master local. Voila, it's as simple as that. Just keep in mind that after changing your master local, your content API will default to this new selection. That's all for now. Until next time. I hope you enjoyed this video and all the progress that we've made this month. Uh, I encourage you to subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you can get notified of all the future videos presenting those future updates. Next month, we'll talk a bit more about the developer experience, but also continuing updating you on the progress of the media library and the page builder. I see you in a month.